Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome His Excellency, the Governor of Maharashtra, Shri K. Shankar Narayanan. Padma Bhushan, Srimadi Rajasri Prilla, Sri Harsh Malvaya, Chairman Merico Industries, Swamji Sophie Chinmaya Mission, Mumbai, dignitaries from various walks of life, principals, teachers, ladies and gentlemen. I am indeed delighted to associate myself with the launch of this very important project transforming Indians to transform India. I congratulate the mission for conceiving this very thoughtful project. Transforming India is indeed a great challenge that the mission has taken upon itself. But I am sure with your sincere dedication and with the inspiration of Swami Chinmayananda, you will succeed in your noble venture. Swami Chinmayanda was one of the greatest seers of modern India. Swamiji was one of the greatest ambassadors of the Vedanta philosophy. Through his discourses, he spread the message of the Gita and the Upanishad to the people in an easy to understand manner. The Chinmaya mission started to spread the teachings of Swami Chinmayananda. He is doing exemplary work. I wish and hope that other service organizations will take inspiration from the work of this mission. Ladies and gentlemen, India has emerged. We are the largest democracy and one of the fastest developing countries of the world. The world looks at India as a country with an immense knowledge power and infinite growth potential. However, we cannot remain complacent. We cannot be content with what we have achieved so far. We are not interested in increasing our GDP alone. We want development of the last man living in the remote part of our country. We want the human development in the sense of all our villages and districts to rise. Our objective is to increase the gross happiness index of India and the people of India. To use the words of Swami Chimayanda, we want maximum happiness for maximum people for maximum time. How can we achieve this? We can achieve this by empowering our people, especially the youth. India's greatest strength is our youth. India is the most youthful country of the world with the average population of 28 years. Transforming India will require empowering the youth, empowering our women, empowering the scheduled castes, scheduled tribes, backward classes, minorities, and also the backward regions of the state empowerment will also to be social, economic, and political. We also need ethical and spiritual empowerment. Education is a key empowerment. Today, we have made considerable progress in educating our masses. The national literacy rate has gone up to 70%. In some states, including Maharashtra, it is even higher. In Kerala, the literacy rate is 100%. But a mere education is not enough. We want employment also. Today we have more 15 million educated unemployment youth in the country. The number of school dropouts and uneducated unemployed is much higher than that. The Honorable Prime Minister of India has announced an ambitious program of creating a pool of 
500 million skilled people by 2022. As Chancellor of Universities in Maharashtra, I have asked the state government to set up a university for vocational education and training. The university will provide short-term skill development programs to both educated as well as illiterate persons. There will be skill development programs for everyone, for urban as well as rural people, including farmers. But I wish to submit here that education and employment alone will not help us in the cause of nation building. We will have to develop uh, the character of our children and youth by providing them value-based education. It is resulting that organizations like Chinmaya Mission and Ramakrishna Mission are drafting our youth into national service. I strongly feel that it should be mandatory for our school as well as college students to spend a few years with NCC, National Service Scheme, Scouts and Guides, and such other national programs. As a democratic country, we cannot force anybody to do a thing in the army, but students and youth doing a thing with the armed forces should be given incentives in employment. Our goal should be to make our youth patriotic and broad-minded. Transforming India will require transforming every individual into a patriotic person who is willing to work for the nation and society. When I was young and when I started my political career, I used to attend Chinmayandi's Gita classes. It was tremendous. I don't know no person under the sun can speak like that. Correct. When you sit there for hours together, you sit there without drinking water. His similes, it was so tremendous. I used to use that in my political speeches. <laughs> now nobody used to say that. That used to be from the bottom of his heart, overwhelming. One day he said, now thousand bulbs are here, and power is also here. For thousand bulbs, you need not have thousand switches, only one switch will do. For a country, for progress, we want only one good leader. If you are lacking that in democracy, then uh, no explanation is necessary for that. <laughs> I was a political worker for 40, 45 years, and I was a minister also several times. Our country is a rich country. I don't want to explain that now. This is not the time. <laughs> but Chinmaya and these speeches, I heard several speeches actually. So many Samajis are in our country. But uh, I have seen only one Chinmayananda in this country. True. He used to tell about his educational time after a lawyer and when he was living at Ernakulam, Cochin, and after that he was touring all over Kerala in other places. But Gita explanation, no person can do like that. So much, everybody will go and sit there. Ladies one time, gents one side, the students one side, People from all walks of life, no caste community creed in that. That's Chinmayanta. So, this mission, Transforming Indians Initiative, become a movement of the people, 
and it reached out to maximum people of India. That is Swamiji explained here. My feeling is, my mind is saying to me, this is a must in this period. We want to transform democracy in the inner recess of the hearts of our children right now. No country is to par with India in a, this sort of democracy. We are the biggest democratic country in the world. But our democracy should have some limitations. That limitation means not in the democratic setup in values. If you have a long tongue, it is not that good to criticize in all areas. Criticism, of course, but uh, should be healthy. Otherwise, that will affect democracy. Every day, if you can, read one line of Chinmayan Jai's speeches, only one line a day. That will convert you, no doubt about it. <laughs> and your mindset also. I don't want to elaborate more about the great sin of our country. And I pray God for a good future for our country. Thank you.